What do we want? What? The following film covers the activities of several white power groups in Georgia and Alabama. The filmmakers were granted unprecedented access to Birmingham, Alabama's neo-Nazi skinhead group, the Aryan National Front, and its leader, Bill Riccio. What you are about to witness are the inside workings of these white supremacist groups filmed over a two-month period. Neo-Nazi skinheads are a worldwide threat. In America, they commit more hate crimes than any other white power group. Most skinheads are between the ages of 12 and 25. They are from all classes and regions of the country. It's a known fact that you obtain the young people and you have the future. Hitler was very successful with his Hitler Youth Movement. Most of the National Socialists that he recruited into the brown shirts were young when they were recruited. And I do not apologize for working primarily with the young. Our skinhead ranks are filled, brimming over with people of a young age. When you have youth, you have restlessness. When you have youth, you have impatience. When you have youth, you tend to get somebody that, that wants to solve all the world's problems very quickly. So, we believe America will turn into an all-out race war. Uh, we've been saying that for years, and the more non-white it gets, uh, that's the more riots there's going to be. And by the year 2025, the white race is going to be a minority in this country. That means bigger riots and more blacks. It means more chaos. And we'll be ready to take our country back when it happens. Skinhead's a 24-hour soldier. Yeah, warriors. He wears his boots 24 hours a day. We're this new SS with the Fourth Reich. I'll use anything within my disposal, any method, any tool, any, anything I have to to ensure the survival of our race. And I may go to hell for doing this, but if I can look up and see white boys and girls playing in a decent, safe, and wholesome America, then bring on the devil with its worst. Hell, Odin. I pray that these little ones will be kept from harm, that you'll give us victory today, that you'll protect us from our enemy, and destroy those that would bring us harm. I pray that you would send your watchers to watch us and you would grant us victory and success on this march. May our people wake up from their sleep and see the error of their ways and stand up for the white race. Need help? Uh, yeah. Please. Hold that up. You know, Bill, you really should be letting me wear this, you know, since I am the youth, you know. <laughs> you can't let me get shot, huh? <laughs> Worst thing in the world you can do is let somebody know you got one of these on. He'll shoot you in the head instead. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're going to make our debut. We're going to announce that we've designated Alabama to become a haven for whites and a white homeland. Uh, it would be impractical at this point to designate the 48 continuous states and that would be sort of a big objective for us at our infantile stages. 
So we've taken certain sections of the country and we've designated those as white homelands. We're gonna show them that this is our state and those nigger loving race traders can go move to uh, San Francisco or somewhere else where they might feel more welcome among its large gay population. But here in Alabama, uh, this is gonna be a white man's land. Yeah. You look different, man. I didn't notice you. Yeah, it's me. I, I got a, I got a little haircut. I, I grew my camouflage. <laughs> I'm happy you guys made it. it really oh yeah, cool. we're missing for the world, man. They don't all support. Hey, hey, ho, ho, racist crackers got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, racist crackers got to go. Well, you know that the sheriff's department does not approve of any violence of any right. kind, any law violation uh, from any group. We're just here to, to have a peaceful demonstration. Nigga, nigga, nigga! Nigga, nigga, nigga! What do we want? What do we want? What do we want? I think that once we become such a factor in Alabama, that the blacks and the other races will probably exit us the state at the rate that the Jews did in 33 when they saw Adolf Hitler elected as chancellor of the German people. Six million more, six million more, six million more, six million more. started before most of us were even born. This is where the white nationalist movement has started today and a move to make Alabama a white homeland, a white state with only white people from Mobile of Alabama to the Tennessee line. It's going to be a white state. We're going to take back the streets of Birmingham. We're going to take back the counties of Alabama. We're going to move those niggas out. We're gonna move the Jews out. We'll hang our enemies, and then it'll be a white Alabama. Hell the Klan, hell the skinheads, hell the movement. White power. What do we want? What do we want? for his poor dying car.
So, Paul, uh, is that pitchfork, uh, was that yours in a prior life, or is that will that be yours after the life? You know, if I go to hell, you know the job I want? I want the job holding a pitchfork and jabbing every Jew in the ass as he comes in there to the lower part of the pit. Be careful, because me and my dad, we don't hardly get along at all, and that's one of the main reasons why I'm living here with Bill. And I feel that Bill, you know, is one of my friends and, and one of my brothers, you know, and that, that, you know, I know that he cares about me and would do stuff for me, and I care a lot about him and would do for him. And I know I feel welcome here more than I would at my own house, my, well, my parents' house. My dad said he couldn't handle me, so he says he gives me over to Bill. He wants Bill to take care of you. Yeah. And your mom thinks the same way. Yeah. She's fed up with me. Because I'm, fascin I'm fascinated with what I'm doing. I'm, I'm too, she says, she says either be a, a Nazi and leave or be a normal kid and stay. So I pick be a Nazi and leave. If we sit here down by your great side, for a while, my house, I've been walking the I've seen by your great side, you were only 19. When you answered the call in 1916, you died great, and I hope you died clean. This house here, it's been a springboard for the skinhead movement in this area. They could hang out here, bring their dates here. We'd cook out, you know, they could drink, they could have a good time here. And as we begin to fellowship here, our numbers grew. We begin to use it as a recruitment station. Man, what a goddamn song. This is my song for my funeral, man. You're a good man. man. I wish you luck, man. I really do. Welcome to the house. Okay. We want the broken <laughs> toys. Send us your broken toys and we'll fix them for you. The kids that received a lot of material things in life, they, they had a, a, a car at 16, a stereo in their room, a TV in their room, but their father ne never gave them love. We have people that we've recruited in our, in our ranks that were abused by their parents. They run away because they could not stand living at home. They were living on the streets. They have no food, no shelter. We go to them and approach them, and we say, look, we'll feed you. Come in here and we'll take care of you. You're white, you're of our people. You have a home now. This is the dungeon. That's our bedroom. It's been just, it's just been a place where People that are coming through, you know, just visiting for a while, they stay. It's like a guest room, I guess, but it's downstairs from up there and all civilization and everything up there. That's where everybody else sleeps up there. And they put us here and, uh, I mean, they didn't put us here, but I mean, we, that's the I mean, if I chose any room, I'd, I'd like it down here, yeah. man. I mean, if it wasn't so moist, you know, yeah. all the mildew and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's yeah, a still, lot. Still, it's home. It's <laughs>
Do you consider that a lot? It's, it's a pretty good bit. You know, I should be drunk by now. I'm, I'm working on buzz here, but, <laughs> you know. With the skinheads, you know, we are a gang. And so, you know, we're a gang just like the Bloods, just like the Crips, but we're not out there doing drugs. We're out there for a race, you know, and, uh, and if it takes violence, we'll do violence, you know. I mean, we are violent people. I mean, I can't sit here and say, you know, skinheads aren't violent, because look at our history. So what's up? Why are you going here tonight? Because I had nothing else to do. Nothing else to do? Yeah. You just came up here. What do you think about everybody up here? You like everybody? Yeah. We're pretty nice people, huh? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. What do you think about White Power? I don't know, I was thinking about, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. You like non-whites? No. You, you like, you don't, no. you don't like non-whites? No. You like, what do you think about Jews? No. I don't like them, they say big nuts. <laughs> Actually, they're pretty smart, Jews are. Not the ones I've met. Jews are pretty smart, actually. Mm -hmm. The thing about they, they fucking, you know, they own banks. <laughs> they have to have something up there to own banks and, you know, run a lot of shit. You know what we're about? White power? Yeah. Everything we're about? Yeah. I talked to Mark about it. Are you just a little bit drunk? I'd love to live back then. Oh, yeah. I'd love to be there back then. Thank God for these kind of films. I can't wait to do The gods are still looking out for us. Here's the youth. Here, just look at this kid. I mean, this, this kid, kid is so intense. Get this kid. Damn, look at him go. <laughs> I just wish I was a racially aware as that young man is at his age, probably what, 10, 12 max? Maybe nine. I must say that young man's got his shit together. See, look, you see all them happy? This was a Germany happy, you know, this was a Germany it was satisfied with the National Socialist government that they had. You know, everybody was happy. You look at their faces, you know. They're smiling. Everybody's smiling. Everybody had jobs. What more could you ask for? This was the greatest country ever, you know. And look who had to fuck them up, you know. Our own government, they were doing just fine, you know. They had their own country. They wanted to have their own Europe, you know. White people's Europe, you know. We are still being controlled by Zionists. More so now Zionists and niggers than we were well, when we first niggers. created this country. And it was they white people. Us. It was white people creating America for white people. Benjamin Franklin or Thomas Jefferson came back right now. They just fucking Yeah, they, they turned over in their grave four or five times, if not more. They're probably spinning right now as we speak. Nach einem Jahr kann ich euch hier wieder begrüßen. Ihr seid heute hier in dieser Muschel nur. I really wish this man would have won the war. No matter what, his spirit will never, ever die.
Has everybody got a sleeping bag, covers, pillow, whatever they need? I hadn't got whatever I need. Bag. Are we sleeping in the van tonight? No, we're sleeping at his place. We got pillows, Paul? Oh, we don't need pillows. We'll sleep on the floor. We're cool. Got Paul. Paul, you got your Sam, we must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. We must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. We have in Birmingham, Alabama, implemented Operation Wolf Pack. We send delegate skinheads to every high school. We go and we talk to these young people in their high school. We give them literature. We get them started. We give them a phone number that they can reach that's not anywhere else. They go and they start their own white youth gangs to counter the terrorism of the black youth gangs. Within 90 days, we will be at your high schools, at your middle schools, at your elementary schools. We will approach young people with the truth that their race is their nation. We will approach your children that do not respect you in your materialistic nine to five society. They want more than a VCR when they're 16. They want something to live for, so they come to us. They want something to die for and to stand for, so they bow beneath the holy swastifix. We are when I see a swastika, I get chill bumps on me because it represents the sum total of everything that I fight for and everything that eventually one day I'll die for. It represents the struggle of my people to preserve itself in a world that's increasingly hostile to whites. And more and more young people have found out that Adolf Hitler was right. Here's, uh, you know, what our skin heads, kind of a thing on it. Go ahead and, you know, that's just yours to read for your, for your reading pleasure, you know. All right, there's the boys. <laughs> I wonder where y'all were. <laughs> you couldn't find a car. Yeah, I like that hat, man. I like that hat. Yeah. There's usually a better crowd than you did here at night. Yeah, this, this is weekday. What is this? What is this? Skinheads. I don't want to be a skinhead. Hey, every human being's equal. I don't want to be a skinhead. I'm sorry, man. We're separatist groups, man. We believe in a separation of races. But can you ask me, ask me one question? Why should all races be separate? Why? Because every race, including white, Black, Hispanic, Asian, should we'll take the Asians, for example, the Japanese and the Chinese. These people don't interbreed. You go to any Asianatic, they do. In America, in America, in America, okay, the melting pot. 
the big in it multiracial thing. But when my forefathers first came here, it wasn't that way, okay? Are you a Nazi? Are you a Nazi? Yes. Hitler, man. I don't think so. Hitler, Dan. All right. Last I recall, you know, the wall was broken. Uh, World War II is over. The wall. You know, Wait. People were together. The Nazis had to the wall. Was no that more was coming. Hitler people. dead, man. It's, it's all right. Hitler's gone. But it's. No, 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 no. I assure you. You're taking what? Jobs. You're taking jobs. I think it's Business more investors yeah. do not like a climate like you are trying to create. It's because they're all Jews. And you are mis. <laughs> no. They are not all Jews. The ill-informed nonsense that you're preaching is going to make nonsense. people see our state nonsense. in a different light than it really is. Please look at the news. Read some. Read some stuff about what's going on in this country today. Yeah. <laughs> your silence is the best. When the day answer. comes, you'll be on your knees for, for praying and just apologize for what you're saying right now. When the day comes, you're man. not hanging from a tree. Yeah. If you're not hanging from a tree. From the looks of you, you'll probably be hanging from a tree. They're right there! Because I'm white. Don't tell you why I walk through nigger town? Yeah, they're I'm white. white. I'm white, too. And I'm not an asshole like you. Oh, I'm an asshole, baby, and I'm... You no, are an asshole. Oh, oh, you lick them. So shut up. Norwegian. You're a sorry excuse Norwegian, for a white person. Norwegian, baby doll. You're a sorry Norwegian. excuse for a white person. Sorry excuse for a white person. Yeah. Right. You're a sorry excuse for a white no, person. No, man. I'm proud of my race. She's not a white person. But I ain't going to hold nothing against What's nobody. Your race? What's your race? White. My race. But What's that doesn't mean. What's, but that don't mean. And you do? Where are you that from? I hold nothing against Who's nobody else. There's anything against. Why are you here then? Why don't you go back to Europe and bitch? My forefathers yeah. found this fucking country. No, not my forefathers. That is mine. I'm yeah. an American Indian, they man. My forefathers were here before you were. No, my no. grandfather, my we grandfather, no, we didn't, we didn't father travel. of the American Revolution. No. We were established. established. No. Just like South Africa. You're established. You ain't done nothing, what? man. Dickhead. Except disgrace our race. Yeah. You're a disgrace. Yeah, Shut up, bitch. <laughs> It's just another dead homeless black man, you know. Uh, I wouldn't be proud of the fact that any of our members did it if, in fact, they did do it. But neither do I feel any remorse because he's not my people. And here we have four good white kids that their entire life is messed up forever because one black homeless man lay dead. And I think it's a tragic waste. several times that she hates the fact that I'm a skinhead. You know, we want you to be the star quarterback on the football team at your yeah. high school, you know. Yeah. We want you to be a Mr. Popular guy, you know, or all around American kid, you yeah. know. Yes. 
student. Yeah, straight A student. You yeah. know, <laughs> one day I came home with like B's, like all B's. You know, I haven't done this, I haven't passed anything for like maybe two years. They're like, well, you can do better. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Jesus, you just want to go. I mean, they suck, man. I mean, sometimes it just really sucks. Sometimes they're really nice. And just, sometimes they just really suck. Yeah. Yeah, I had a pretty good childhood, you know. It was, it was okay, but, you know, then my mom married this guy, you know. I mean, they were living together and everything, and uh, he was really beat me really bad, you know. But the thing just, just completely drove me nuts, man. It's like me and my stepbrother went over uh, to go fishing, and uh, we were started horsing around, and he lost his hat in the ocean. It was just gone, you know. There was no way to get it back. And uh, so uh, we went back to the house, and my stepdad's like, what did y'all do today? And he was like, oh, we went fishing, you know. And Mark lost my hat. And my stepdad comes back there, and he kicks down the door. And he grabs me by my hair and he drags me outside and he throws me out uh, down uh, below the porch and then he goes and goes inside and gets my mom and uh, you know he talks to her for a minute and then he comes outside with a horse whip and he starts beating the fuck out of me and he's really messing me up you know and uh, there's like this punk rock girl that lived down the street who said she could hear me screaming about a mile fucking away you know and, and then like after that my mom fucking came outside and you know finished a job for him. He whipped me for, for hanging out with him, and then she came out and whipped me for losing that guy, for, for losing my stepbrother's hat. And, man, Jesus, dude, man. Dude, this was on my fucking 14th birthday, you know. Zeke, Kyle. Yeah. Have a little Aryan cookout here. <laughs> Chow's up, guys. Yeah. Now everybody will see the green mold on the side <laughs> of our house. <laughs> we do chew our food. This generation is the first generation to live less well than their parents lived. <clears throat> We've witnessed a deindustrialization of America, and therefore most of the people have been relegated to a service industry type work. And it just doesn't pay as much to deliver pizzas as it does to work in a steel foundry. All the jobs out there, just, you know, it's, uh, you gotta have experience, but how are we gonna get the experience and nobody else hires us? Or... If you know, what's, what's the other job? Just burger flipping, you know. Like, nobody wants to burger flip. When like you go to a job, you know, they're too busy trying to avoid discrimination so they won't get sued, you know. So they hire a bunch of black people and a bunch of you know, foreigns and all this stuff, you know. There's no room for for the white man. It's like, then they say that because like if they turn down a black man, then the guy's gonna say, well, he's discriminated against me, and then they can sue him or some shit like that. You know? The very thing the skinheads are about. What our boots represent is working class. And the fact that, that family, motherhood, fatherhood, the, the traditional family values are what the skinhead nation stands for. And, and that's what we unmitigatedly stand for. That's why we'll die for what we believe, because you know we believe it's got to get back to that if our race is to survive into the next millennium. There's enough of us to eat this cost. It is time that the clan and the skinheads unify under one banner, that we unify under one cause, the great cause of the 14 words. We must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. I have a dream that the clan and the skinheads will hug each other's neck, that we may not agree on everything, but as long as we can agree that our race is our nation, the arms of the skinheads fly open to our brothers in the Ku Klux Klan. I'm a Klansman and a skinhead. 
I'm both because both represent the white nationalist movement. Both stand for the white racial precepts. Some people ask why these men shaved their heads. The answer is they come from a generation that worshiped pantyhose for women and electric hair dryers for men, and they're tired of it. So they separate themselves from society. They shave their heads to symbolize that they have been defecated on by the Zionist occupation government. Therefore, they purify their heads by shaving it, saying we do not agree with the mistakes of the past, and we're going to stand up and make a future for white children in America. We want our country back. White this is power. our country. White power. White power. What can I say? The man just said it all. We're going to give the privilege and honor of lighting the cross tonight to Mr. Billy Riccio. Landsman, halt, face the cross. For my God. For my country. For my family. For my clan. Landsman, to the cross. Clansmen, salute the cross. to see that some of them in the end wanted unity. Yeah. But most of them want to work with us. And that's what it's all about. Y'all help put it up. So yeah. y'all can get Philip, what are you? National Socialist. Where does Adolf Hitler live? In my heart. Hell Philip. Hell Philip. Hell Philip. Like power. Just a little Hitler right now. Hey, y'all about ready to go back to the smoke city? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Oh, thank y'all for coming up. Y'all are my life. I mean that. No, Bill Riccio. No, Bill Riccio. For a long time, I said, well, if I ever had to go on the lamb, they could be identifying marks much better than even fingerprints. And uh, then I told myself, uh, you know, uh, the, the troops out here have them. You know, it's part of being a skinhead is getting a tattoo. You know, you can let your hair grow back, but you mark yourself. It's an indelible mark. Uh, it's a brand. And, uh, you know, when you tattoo yourself, you uh, it's a commitment. It's going out. I believe he's scared I'm going to wipe off my uh, stencil. No, don't worry about the blood. Well, it's just getting in my way. Oh, I forgot to mention he's legally blind. <laughs> I am. <laughs> You've got a crazy man doing this. Cheers. I've received kind of hints from all different sources. Uh, they've come to a lot of the skinheads' parents 
when they've gotten in little problems or whatever, or even if they're being investigated for different things, uh, they've made the comment that all the skinheads in Birmingham, including me, were going to be either dead or in, in prison by the end of the year. Yeah, These uh, are. They, whenever I went to jail for uh, just being up here and being underage, they, uh, when my dad came to get me out, they told him that uh, Bill was the main person un behind everything, and uh, they said that they'd either have us in jail or dead by the end of the year. You know, the heat's on. I'm concerned, you know. Uh, Why should we worry? We haven't done anything. We haven't done anything illegal. But, you know, it's never stopped law enforcement before. One of our sources that has a relative in the FBI office says that on their coffee breaks and their personal conversation, they refer to me as Charlie. And uh, I wondered, why Charlie, you know? And he says, dumbass Charlie Manson says uh, he never uh, <laughs> touched one of the guys or, or girls that were slain either, but he had his minions do it for him. And uh, I just have this to say, I know we're being watched. I know we're under the camera. I know you can't play games with these people. Uh, it's like a, an ant defying an elephant right now. He busted in real hard. I mean, kicked the door down, kicked the lock off the, you know, to the office and stuff. I mean, look at this place. They ripped us apart. Tore up beds downstairs. Tore up my bedroom. Threw my clothes everywhere. All over that dirty floor. Clothes are dirty. I mean, you know, <laughs> no respect. I mean, they came in here and they just went through everything. Hey, well, the federal government's got the broad man. That's just, it's unreal, man. They're chicken shit. But you know what? We're trying to be white people about it. We're trying to be white about it, you know? They raid my house, they tear it up. You ought to see the walls. You ought to see everything they tore up. You know? A working man works, you know? They come in there and do that. But you know what they do? They leave these crack houses alone to sell our kids dope. They talking about contributing to a miner? Let them go in the crack houses where they're selling dope to white kids. Let them go in there where they're taking our little children and turning them into dope things. Let them go in there with a, with a, uh, the black people are selling drugs to little white children. No, they don't want to do that. They're in there because I'm asking a white kid to stand in a full length mirror and be proud of what he sees. We don't want uh, the Treasury Department coming out here when they have no authority whatsoever to do so. It's a prima facie case of harassment, man. Been to my house three times in two months. You know, three times in two months, okay? Tore it up, nothing ever happens. Come over here, sit at our rallies, take pictures, you know? Yeah, I'm mad, I'm mad. You know, I want them to leave me alone, you know? Because if I'm out in the open, I'm not gonna be anything illegal, do anything illegal. It's when they don't see me and they don't know where I am, they got something to worry about. I pride myself in racial loyalty. These things I have no identity. I reject multiracial security. White National Socialist, proud to be, and you can be. White National Socialist, honor and loyalty. White National Socialist, proud to be, and you can be. A white National Socialist, with honor and loyalty. White National Socialist, proud to be, and you can be a 
White National Socialist. Socialist, National Socialist. <laughs> Hail victory! Hail victory! Hail victory. Hail victory. Hail victory. White power. I know sometimes a lot of people would say we have a small amount of people here on this cow pasture tonight. And you know, even the mighty oak tree starts as a small acre. Let us not be discouraged because we're few in member. I remember 2,000 years ago, a Galilean who came down out of his home in the mountains there in Judea. He had but 12 lowly followers, and one of them turned out to be an FBI agent. He had but 12 people in his inner circle, and look what their theology has accomplished today. The Klan faced such odds in 1865, and in five years, it turned it around. The FBI came to me about three months ago and they said, Bill Riccio, you're rubbing that cat's fur the wrong way. I'm going to put you back in jail. Six and a half years ought to have been enough. Should have learned your lesson, boy. I said, God damn it, turn the goddamn cat around then. I promise, I I promise that my motto, my my motto, motto will be, will be my, race is my, nation, my race is my nation. My only nation is my race. My only nation is my race. My I swear the loyalty. I swear the loyalty to the immortal leader of our race. To the immortal leader of our race. Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler. And to the principles of the Aryan National Front. And to the principles of the Aryan National Front. I will die before betraying it. I will die before betraying it. White victory. White victory. White power. 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 White Burn it! Burn it! It's already lit! Burn it! Throw it in! The Jewish shit rag! Death to Zod! Death to Zod! Yeah, let it burn. <laughs> when Bill speaks, he, he reminds people of Hitler, the way he stares, the, the hand motions. It, it does, man. It looks just like you when you look, man. When, you st when you're talking to somebody, doesn't it, Ken? Doesn't it? Yeah, it it's it like does. Hitler. It's like, you gotta do it, man. You gotta do it, man. Don't compare me to that, man. I'm so unworthy. It's your look, you know, your stare. Your stare. stare. You've got his stare. I mean, you got. Yeah. I hope I have his spirit. Hitler said that he would arise from the grave one day, his spirit would. He said it was necessary that he would die for his people. But he said one day he will rise from the grave, his spirit would. And then the world would know that he was right. I wish 17 years ago, Bill could have been my biological father. I swear, I mean, because I've not seen my father for eight years, man. But I know Bill would have been there this whole 17 years, man. I know he would have. Because, you know, we're here now, and I can say, it's safe to say that he is my father. And he's all these youth's father. Every single one of them. Right. I mean, you're proud to be white. That's what it is. You're proud to be white. I think with white power. the youth these days, people say yes. They're easy to brainwash. And, and I don't think that's what's going on here. What Bill does is show them their white heritage and give them something to be proud in. And that's what they come here to get. 88. Hail the youth. Hail the youth. Future. The adults had their chance. They kill each other, white man killing white man. It's, not, it's like at one time I, when you were speaking, I heard you say when the federal government looks around and go, oh my God, what's going on here? 
they're going to go to their knees to a 16, 17-year-old skinhead. And that 16-year-old is going to say, get in line for the gala or I'll take care of you right here on the spot. And don't use a bullet, bash your head in. We'll save ammunition. Yeah. Then they'll know we were right. Then they'll know that their 30 pieces of silver that they took can't buy them a day of salvation because Ari and Justin will be reckoned and meted out in the harshest one more minute, one more minute in their no, miserable more existence. More Holy cost too, coming to a town near you. <laughs> <laughs> the sooner the better. <laughs> <laughs> On August 7th, law enforcement agents arrested Bill Riccio and charged him with federal weapons violations. A federal judge ordered Riccio to be held without bail, stating that Riccio set into motion a synergistic wave of hatred that encouraged others to beat, stab, and murder innocent people. The judge also stated that, while Riccio's fiery rhetoric is constitutionally protected by the First Amendment, it is his apparent ability to organize and mobilize disenchanted young white males even to acts of violence that makes him dangerous. I heard from Bill Riccio today, and uh, he thinks that they've got enough hard evidence against him, which is not true, it's all trumped up, that they're going to keep him locked up for the rest of his life. You know, I don't want to see this happen. I know the rest of you people don't either. You know, I think that we need to start getting out and doing more. We need to act more militant, you know. I'm not talking about marching down the streets, you know, waving flags. I'm talking about going down the streets with guns, you know, and kicking some fucking ass, man. You know, Help Bill Riccio! Help Bill Riccio! Save our land.